Now, as for how the RTX 4080 Master performed, well, I paired it up with the super toasty i9-13900K, 32 gigs of Kingston's Fury a Beast RGB memory running at 5600 MHz, and the Aorus Master Z790. With all of the games set on Ultra with a no DLSS on 1440p, all of the games reach over 100 frames a second. When enabling a DLSS or FSR and ray tracing, we get a nice up to 25% increase in FPS, except for the new Plague Tale which hit almost 70% instead of 25. So that was definitely quite surprising. Then for the 4K, it was only on Cyberpunk on Ultra without a DLSS where it fell below 60 frames. All the rest with pretty much max settings on 4K did over 60 frames a second. Definitely not so bad. But now when enabling a DLSS, you do get upwards of a 50% a bump in FPS. And now instead of a 70% for a Plague Tale, you get a 90%. This does make a 4K 144 hertz much much easier to actually obtain just by dropping some of the settings slightly not ultra maybe just high or very high and then enabling dlss and you're right there now unfortunately i did not have a rtx 3090 or 3090 ti to actually compare it to because of the new system with uh, the i9 3900k uh, i wasn't able to test that but i was able to compare it to the rtx 4090 and on 1440p the 4090 was between a 7 to 50 percent faster than the 4080 however in 4k it was actually much lower between all of the games going up between a 24 to 45 percent which is quite the the difference. Now when it comes to Blender, the 4090 is over 30% faster and in spec view perf it's around 25% faster. Now, as for clock speeds, the reference in a video card has a boost clock of 2.51 GHz while the master hits up 2.55 GHz. That's only on a paper and on a game on stock settings. It averaged 2.835 GHz and with a slight overall clock it hits 2.88 gigahertz and i do believe with enough tinkering you might even able to hit a three gigahertz on the air although i didn't try that and i'm not necessarily going to but it's definitely close enough that you could possibly reach that 